Just recently, I completed the Saddlesore 1000. I traveled a grueling 1,044 miles in about 17 hours from Ohio to Florida. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy. In this video, I'm gonna bring you along the journey of conquering the iron butt, and I'll share some tips and tricks that I learned along the way. Now make sure you stay tuned to the end because I'll be opening up the package that I received for completing this challenge. Now let's hop into it. So exactly, what the heck is an iron butt? In a nutshell, it's a long distance motorcycle ride. There's a bunch of different challenges that you can attempt. The one that I did was the Saddle Sore 1000. You have to ride 1000 miles in under 24 hours. They have a ton of other challenges that you can attempt such as riding 48 states in just 10 days or riding coast to coast in 30 days. Uh, yeah, screw that. I'll leave a link down in the description to the IBA website so you can check out all the other rides. Now let's move on to some tips for completing the Saddlesore 1000. First on the list, planning your route. I cannot stress how important this is. You have to make sure you come up with a solid route and plan your stops along the way. You want to do this because you don't want to go through a major city because this could slow you down and you also don't want to run out of gas because you failed to plan your gas stops. If you've been riding for a while, you know about how far you can go on your motorcycle on a full tank of gas. My bike can go about 170 miles, so I spaced out my stops about 150 miles apart. This was a good point for me to stop, stretch, get off the bike, and fill up the tank. I do want to mention something else though, is to map out your trip for at least 1,025 miles. Just because your odometer says you went 1,000 miles isn't always the case. Most odometers aren't 100% accurate unless you just recently got them calibrated. You don't want to do all this for nothing. I use Google Maps to plan out my route and it worked perfectly. Next on my list is preparing your bike. You have to do an honest assessment and ask yourself, can my bike even complete this trip? Some things to think about are your tires, your brakes, and the last time you changed your oil. You have to realize you're going to be going on a thousand mile trip and if you're not doing a loop, you're going to have to travel all that distance back. Before you leave, make sure you have a fresh oil change and inspect your tires and brakes to make sure you'll have enough life to make it all the way back home. I also suggest take a wrench and just go over all your nuts and bolts to make sure everything's tight. The last thing you want is a breakdown because of a loose bolt. Not only do you need to do an assessment on your motorcycle, you need to do one on yourself. This is where you definitely need to be honest with yourself. Are you mentally and physically prepared for this challenge? What's the longest distance you ever traveled on your motorcycle? I don't suggest taking on this challenge cold turkey. Do yourself a favor, slowly build yourself up taking longer and longer trips and then complete this challenge. This challenge isn't for the weak-minded and it's no easy task. Now let's talk about some things that you need to do before you leave. Check the weather. Let's go live to Ollie Williams with the Blackie Weather Report. Ollie? It's raining sadly! Besides hitting some freezing cold temperatures, I lucked out pretty good on my trip, for the most part. You want to make sure that you're not going to be running into any big storms or terrible weather. I know the weather's unpredictable, but you want to do the best that you can. You also want to make sure you see what the weather's going to be like on the way there and the way back. Have a backup plan just in case the weather takes a turn for the worse, like, like it, it did, did for, for me. me. The day before I was going to head back from Florida, I checked the weather and a big snowstorm was going to hit Ohio. Luckily, I was able to have a plan B and my dad met me in Georgia to get me back home safely always have a plan B. Now let's talk about some items that will make this a comfortable trip. Let's face it, you're going to be on your motorcycle for countless hours. One thing that will end this trip quicker than a swarm of angry bees inside your helmet is being uncomfortable. Some of the items that I highly suggest is a comfortable seat, highway pegs, a backrest, properly fitting gear, and a full face helmet. All of these items will make the journey a little more comfortable. I can't stress enough, make sure you pack gear for all the different weather conditions you might face. Some of the gear that I packed was multiple pairs of gloves and jackets, rain gear, and some leather chaps. But I should have packed something else. One mistake that I made was not having any heated gear. When I left for my trip, it was the beginning of March. If you know anything about Ohio, the weather's a real crapshoot around that time. When I left my house that morning, it was about 28 degrees. I had my nice gloves on, big heavy jacket, leather chaps, and I also had heat and grips. I thought I'd be fine, but I was sadly mistaken. I was fine for about an hour, but then the bitter cold started cutting through all my gear. This was the most uncomfortable I think I've ever been in my life. So much that I contemplated my life choices and second guessed if I was even going to continue on this challenge. Well, 
Obviously I did because I'm making this video. Now it's time for some tips while you're out on the ride. What's the best time to leave? I did some pretty extensive research before I took on this challenge and I found that most riders left early in the morning. This made sense to me so I left at 2.30 a.m. This made it so I was able to do the majority of my trip during the daylight. My way of thinking is I'd rather ride the roads that I'm familiar with in the dark and then travel the roads that I'm unfamiliar with during the daylight. This definitely helped me stay focused and alert and at the end of the trip, I only had to travel in the dark for about an hour. Now, how do you stay on time? Most likely, you're probably going to run into some unexpected problems. This started for me at the very first stop. At the beginning of my trip, I left and headed to the starting point. Even though I googled the hours of the gas station and it said it was open 24 hours, it was closed. I ended up finding another gas station pretty close to my starting point, so I went there, filled up my tank, and I went to go and get the receipt, and the darn thing wouldn't print. So of course, I had to go inside and get the receipt. I was planning to leave by 2 a.m., but I didn't leave till 2.30. While you're out on your journey, you want to be as efficient as possible. I tried to keep my gas stops about 15 minutes. Just enough time to stretch my legs and fill up my gas tank. I found that it's better to knock out as many miles as possible at the beginning of the trip so that way you can gain some extra time in case you run into a problem. I know I said to keep your gas stops about 15 minutes, but make sure you plan one longer stop about halfway into the trip. This will help you catch your second win. I also suggest packing everything you plan on eating and drinking into your saddlebag. That way you don't have to go into the gas station and waste extra time. I pack six protein bars and a half a gallon of water. And speaking of water, it's extremely important to stay hydrated while you're out on the road. And if you start getting tired and don't think you can go any further, abort the mission. Your life is more important than a piece of paper. Now, what do you need to do to get your ride certified? In order to get your ride certified, you have to document it properly. Let me show you how I did this. First, as I mentioned earlier, I planned my route in Google Maps. I took that route I created and saved it as a file. Luckily for me, I didn't have to take any detours so I didn't have to edit this route. Next, you have to go to the IBA website and print out your application and the ride log. I will say you can print out the ride log and fill it out along your trip, but I found it easier to fill it out after I got home. On the ride log, you fill out all the information for your trip. The stop number, date, time, time zone, odometer mileage, location of your stop, and the description of your stop. For the application, it's pretty straightforward. Just fill out all the information it asks. This leads me into collecting your receipt. You have to get a receipt at every stop so that way they can verify you are actually there. If you can't get a receipt, they have witness forms on their website that you can ask somebody to fill out. Now, after you get your receipt, you have to take a picture of it next to your odometer. Make sure the receipt has the date, time, city, and state. Now, after you have all this together, you can either snail mail it, or I suggest just doing it by email. In the email, you can let them know if you had any issues on your trip. I actually had to do this because one of the times on the receipts was wrong. I simply explained this in the email and I had zero issues. They were able to tell based off the other pictures I took of the receipts. After I sent the email, I got a response back in about a week saying my ride was certified. After your ride gets certified, you can go to their website and order your certificate. They have a couple different packages to choose from, and I chose the biggest package they had, the Full Monty. Time to open this bad boy up. I've had this package for over a month, and I wanted to open this on camera and share it with you guys. My gosh, this might take longer than I thought here. My gosh, how the heck do you open this thing? Jeez, oh, Pete. Okay. Now we're burning with oil here. So we got two envelopes here. Let's open up this first one. All right, so I got the plate backer. Iron Butt Association, baby. What else we got in here? All right, we got the official Saddle Sore 1000 patch from the Iron Butt Association. Definitely going on my vest. I'm going to wear this with pride here. See if we got anything else in here. That's all they got in that one. All right. I'm guessing this other one's going to be the certificate. Got some literature on exactly what the Iron Butt is. Then it also comes with a letter from the president of the Iron Butt Association. Pretty cool. Okay. Now also in here, I got 
two of the certificates in here. There it is, baby. Officially a part of the iron butt. Got my certificate. Let's see what it says here. This is the certified that on the 9th of March, 2023, Jogo, that's me, rode a 2017 Harley Davidson Street Glide, a total of 1,044 grueling miles in less than 24 hours, starting in Cleveland, Ohio, continuing on to Charleston, West Virginia, Charlotte, North Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, and Jacksonville, Florida, before ending in Daytona Beach, Florida for the 82nd annual Daytona Beach Bike Week, one of the largest and longest running motorcycle events in the world, while participating in the Saddle Sore 1000. The Saddle Sore 1000 was conducted under very strict gu guidelines set forth by the Iron Butt Association. Only a handful of riders from around the world have managed to solve the challenges such a grueling ride involves. Hey, there it is. Now, when you're filling out your application, it tells you to list up to five major cities that you traveled through, but I did not list on there that it was during Daytona Bike Week. They added that in there uh, all on their own. So that was pretty cool. Now, the next question is, will I ever do another one of these? Probably not. I've had my fill, but you never know. If you want to check out some more motorcycle tips and tricks, check out this playlist right here. As always, this is Jogo with Jogo Motorcycle Adventures, and until next time, ride on.